1973, in front of a Senate committee, John Dean began reading his 245-page opening statement, laying out what he saw and what he took part in inside the Nixon White House during Watergate. Today, he went before the House Judiciary Committee as an educator, not an insider, though taking plenty of heat from this president, just like old times when he took it from Nixon. His testimony comes as committee chairman Jerry Nadler says he has struck a deal with the Justice Department to obtain certain documents from the Mueller report, delaying contempt proceedings against Attorney General Barr for now. John Dean joins us momentarily. You'll hear as well from one of the congressmen who questioned him today. First, some moments from the testimony, and you'll see there were stark differences, obviously, in how Democrats and Republicans approached it all. John Dean was the White House counsel under President Richard Nixon. He is most well known for his role as a principal, as a principal witness during the Senate Watergate hearings, where his testimony was later fully corroborated as to its truthfulness by the revelations in President Nixon's White House tapes. Comparing Nixon to just any future administration, would you say there was a future administration that committed more crimes than the Nixon administration as far as obstruction? I would say the Trump administration is in fast competition with what happened in the Nixon administration. And what was the Saturday Night Massacre? Saturday Night Massacre uh, occurred in October of 1973 when Richard Nixon removed or fired Archibald Cox as the special counsel. Yeah, I could catch your testimony on TV. In fact, by the way, I could this morning. I'm a Republican. I believe that you use everything that you've got to do as much business as you want and generate as much as you want to work for yourself. But I don't believe it's the problem of this committee to have to come and hear from those who are not a part of the Mueller investigation, who are not a part of this, pontificating on things that you can do on TV. Maybe you were thinking about this when you said the president of the United States was incapable of doing anything. Were you thinking about the fact that the embassy is now in Jerusalem? I mean, I think about this one. Every single candidate for as many cycles as I can remember, Republican and Democrat, have promised the American people, you elect me, we're going to move the embassy to Jerusalem. And guess what? They get elected and they come up with a million reasons why they can't do what they said they were going to do. But this president didn't. The embassy is now in Jerusalem. So I'm just wondering, what were you thinking about when you said he's incapable of accomplishing anything? Uh, Mr. Jordan, I think that uh, under the parliamentary rules of the House, uh, I'm refrained from addressing a full answer to your question. <laughs> you Today, Chairman Nadler brings in front of the Judiciary Committee a guy to talk about obstruction of justice who went to prison in 1974 for obstructing justice. I did not go to prison. Okay. You pled guilty to obstruction of justice. I'm glad you got to stay out of prison then, I guess. Mr. Dean, how many American presidents have you accused of being Richard Nixon? <laughs> I actually wrote a book about Mr. Bush and Mr. Cheney with the title, Worse Than Watergate. So, so <laughs> Mr. Dean has made a cottage industry out of accusing presidents of acting like Richard Nixon. I would like to know how much money mm. he makes based on making these accusations and exploiting them for his own economic can, benefit. Uh, and Mr. You're saying, no, Mr. Mr. Gates, uh, 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 Mr. Gates, I appreciate you were uh, not born at the time this all happened. Do you believe if we, if we turned the lights off here and maybe lit some candles, got out a Ouija board, we could potentially raise the specter of Richard Nixon? <laughs> I, I doubt that. Congressman Deutsch, watching this hearing today, I mean, Republicans relitigating Watergate, Democrats focusing on the Mueller report, yet another example of a kind of a tale of two hearings. Was anything accomplished? Sure. I, today was actually a really important step forward in getting to the truth, Anderson. Uh, what you saw today over the course of four hours was a very thoughtful and deliberate approach to uh, what was in the Mueller report and making sure that everyone in America starts to understand it so that we can, we can have the kind of important discussion that's necessary about what steps should come next. The, the documents that the Justice Department is, is going to provide to your committee do you know when you'll be able to actually view them and, and where you'll be able to view them? Uh, well, I'm, I'm expecting to be able to view them this week. It's, uh, it's a good step. I'm glad we're going to be getting these documents. Frankly, we should have gotten them weeks ago. There was no reason to withhold them. Uh, this is one further attempt at, at stonewalling, which is, again, why today's hearing was so important, because despite these efforts to prevent us from getting to the truth, uh, today, finally, we had the chance again, in a really thoughtful way, 
uh, while my Republican colleagues were spinning conspiracy theories, we were actually delving into the many ways that the president, as laid out in the Mueller report, may have engaged in obstruction of justice. And, and to be clear, these documents, are, are they going to give the Democrats on the committee everything that they've requested from the Department of Justice? Uh, I don't think so, and I look forward to seeing what's in them. But we're still going to go forward this week, tomorrow. We're still going to go forward in enforcing our subpoenas. Today was a, a good hearing, but what, it's not ideal. What we want are the fact witnesses. We want to hear directly from Don McGahn. We want to hear from the attorney general. And we're going to, to do what we need to to enforce the subpoenas and get them in front of us so that we can ask them the questions that the American people uh, want us to ask as well. So, so what is the next step on actually getting, you know, the people who, are at, who were in the room at the time, to getting Don McGahn, getting others actually to testify? Sure. Well, well, tomorrow, as I said, tomorrow we're going to go, the House is going to authorize going to court to enforce the subpoenas, uh, the subpoenas that, that Don McGahn and the Attorney General have refused to comply with. So we're going to pursue all those avenues. At the same time, what does that mean? Enforce, like, how are you going to enforce them? We're going to go. We're going to go into court. We're going to go into court, and we're going to pursue contempt if they don't come in. That's that's the next step. At the at the same time, though, we're going to continue with this investigation, serious investigation that we started just on March fourth, uh, and we're going to hold hearings throughout the rest of this month that will lay out in detail for the American people all of the ways that. The Mueller report and Mueller's team uh, analyzed this, the various ways that the president appears to have committed obstruction of justice. And do you still want Mueller? I think it would be helpful for Mueller to come in. For anyone who, who saw him in his brief press remarks when he closed down his office, uh, referring to his, his, his work, his document, uh, it's clear, it was an important reminder of the time he spent working on it. And there's no one who can better respond to the questions that we have about the investigation, about the president, the president's refusal uh, to, uh, to answer any questions directly uh, per, in a, on a face-to-face -face basis. There's no one better than Mueller. So sure, I think we should bring him in before our committee. Congressman Ted Deutsch, appreciate your time. Thank you. Thanks, Anderson. Well, joining us now, the man at the center of the uh, deja vu for some today, John Dean himself, former Nixon White House counsel. Currently one of the people we turn to for legal advice. So, John, you got pretty hard hit hard today by certainly by Republicans. Why do you think it was important for you to testify? Why did you want to testify? Well, when I was invited, what I thought I could do, Anderson, is what I did today was to draw some historical parallels between what happened in the Mueller report and Watergate. And there's there's striking examples. Everything from the fact that the uh, the Mueller report is very much in the mold with a little bit more volume as the Watergate roadmap. And while this wasn't an impeachment hearing, I think all the signals are from Mueller that that's, he expects the Congress to deal with the issues he couldn't. You, you think uh, Mueller believes Congress should move toward impeachment or at least hold hearings on impeachment? I think, I think that's what he says in the document. In fact, I cited a part of the uh, document, one of the footnotes, where he says the reason he didn't make a charging decision on obstruction of justice is he didn't want to preempt or any way influence uh, the constitutional duties of the Congress. So, I mean, you can't be much more direct. Uh, he doesn't have authority to, to refer per se, but that's one of the points he made in the document. W were you taken aback at all by, by how personal some of the attacks by uh, Republicans were? I mean, did you expect well, the hearing to be as contentious as it was? <laughs> I did, actually. I, I know the players. I've watched them before. I watched them badger Hillary Clinton. Uh, they're all flamethrowers. Uh, and I did make the point that when I worked at that committee uh, many years ago, they actually accomplished things because the Republicans crossed the aisle and worked with the Democrats. And we accomplished things like amending the 64 uh, Civil Rights Act, the Voting Rights Act of 65, the 18-year-old vote, the 25th Amendment. Those are things that would never get processed in that committee today. Looking at, you know, you, take, you look at these pictures side, uh, side by side uh, of you in June 25th, 1973, <laughs> and, and today, I mean, I wonder, did you ever imagine that you would be testifying before Congress again almost 46 years later, exactly? <laughs> I, I don't think I could conjure that. Uh, in fact, one of the reasons that I did what I did back during Watergate 
was the thought that this will never happen again. And one of the reasons I've had a knot in my stomach, one of the reasons I'm on CNN is because I'm deeply troubled by the presidency we're living with. I, I want to play something that the president actually said about you today. Um, let's listen. John Dean's been a loser for many years, so I've been watching him on one of the networks that is not exactly Trump-oriented, and I guess they paid him a lot of money over the years. No, John's been a loser for a long time. We know that. I think he was disbarred, and he went to prison. Other than that, he's doing a great job. Uh, he also called you disgraced and a, quote, sleazebag attorney on Twitter. Um, obviously, I'm as big a fan of yours, uh, your work as, as I guess you are of his. <laughs> well... Uh, I'm honored to be on his enemies list. I was able to make Nixon's at the end, uh, and so I, I, I'm pleased that I'm on Trump's, uh, given my feelings about the threat he is to this country. Well, John Dean, I know it's been a long day. I appreciate you uh, taking time to talk to us. Thank you. Thanks, Anderson.